Hi, this is Chris McKaylee, and this video podcast discusses the separation of powers doctrine and exemptions from the APA process. I think I've raised in the past the concern I have about legislative exemptions from the Administrative Procedure Act for regulations considered by state agencies because the main two purposes of the APA process is to provide uh, notice to the public and the regulated community about an impending regulation, and then the opportunity for public comment on those proposed regulations. And by exempting an agency from the APA, it removes notice to the public and the opportunity to be heard. I also think that when you delegate, when the legislature delegates part of its constitutional lawmaking authority to the executive branch and those agencies and departments and boards and commissions, and then exempt the regulations from compliance with the APA, it really, in my mind, raises the question of whether the separation of powers doctrine is being uh, violated. So what do we find in a bill <clears throat> that becomes a statute? It'll say maybe something like the Administrative Procedure Act with the code section citation, the government code, shall not apply to any standard criterion, procedure, determination, rule notice guideline, or any other guidance established or issued by, and name this, the executive branch agency or department. So my, my concern is that providing this statutory exemption from that public notice and comment uh, raises the separation of powers doctrine, which we find in our California Constitution, Article 3, Section 3. We have an explicit separation of powers doctrine rather than a court-adopted one like at the federal level. Specifically, Section 3 says the powers of state government are legislative, executive, and judicial. Persons charged with the exercise of one power may not exercise either of the others except as permitted by this constitution. And obviously the purpose of the separation of powers doctrine is to make sure that our state government power divides amongst the three co-equal branches of government uh, is attempting to ensure that one branch doesn't become oh so dominant. And obviously the lawmaking power is granted to the legislative branch and the, the courts of California um, and certainly at the federal level for that matter as well, permit the legislative branch of government to delegate a certain amount of their lawmaking power to the executive branch of, of government. So long as that delegation meets some certain standards and certainly the principles outlined by the judicial branch. Now, what we have <clears throat> is that when you exempt some executive branch agencies and departments from the rulemaking process under the APA, it gives rise to the argument whether the appropriate amount of delegated authority is actually taking place. In fact, one of the judicial tests that the courts have enumerated is the so-called adequate safeguards test. And that potentially could be violated by exempting mm -hmm. rulemaking from the APA process. The basic judicial rationale behind this adequate safeguards test is that the legislative delegation of lawmaking authority to the executive branch has to contain certain limitations on the executive branch and the rulemaking agencies to ensure that that um, delegation of authority is not violated or used for an unintended purpose. So fundamentally, the procedural rules that we find in the APA are to ensure that the executive branch is limited in exercising this delegated quasi-legislative authority to make regulations. And with the simple exemption of the state agencies from complying with the APA, 
we run into a problem that other states of Supreme Courts have ruled that the delegation of rulemaking authority by the legislative branch is actually unconstitutional if there isn't an opportunity for public notice and comment. Now that hasn't been decided in California, but other state courts such as those in North Carolina and Pennsylvania among others have actually struck down um, state rulemaking statutes that didn't provide an opportunity for notice and public comment, uh, let alone a public hearing on a proposed regulation. So when the California legislature exempts an executive branch agency or department from complying with the requirements of the APA, not only does it deny the public and obviously the regulated community from the rights that they otherwise have under the APA for primarily notice and the opportunity to comment, it could also be violating a fundamental constitutional doctrine, the separation of powers. So it certainly gives rise to the legislature perhaps reconsidering uh, whether it's good public policy or even constitutional to do a wholesale exemption for state agencies to comply with the state APA.